In this video, I just want to give you a little bit of kind of a preview of what's coming up for my newest course. So those of you who follow me know that my next course is going to be a REST API integration using Retrofit. And I'm also going to be using the design pattern, the architectural design pattern known as MVVM. So in other words, if you don't know what MVVM is, this is going to be sort of the architecture of what it's going to look like. We're going to have our activities or our fragments, then the view models, which get data from, or sorry, update the fragments or the activities. Then we have the repository, which is kind of like a hub for the, the different data sources. And then we have the remote data source, which is going to be from retrofit, getting data from the internet, in other words, then you have the room local SQLite database, which is going to act as a database cache. So if for some reason, the REST API fails, and I can't get the data from the web service, then I'll be able to get it from the local SQLite database. Now, the way I'm going to teach this course is I think I'm going to break it up into two parts. I'm going to first do the part where we uh, set up MVVM, the view model, the repository, and then just get the data from the remote data source. So in other words, I'm not going to be setting up the database cache. And then in the second part of the second course, I'm going to implement that database cache because setting up and doing the cache and figuring out the logic for the cache is a whole different thing. It's probably going to double the length of the course. I would think I'm just guessing. So uh, what I'll do is I'll probably break it up into two parts, but anyway, that's enough talking. I'm sure you want to see what the application looks like. Okay. So this is the main screen that comes into view. When you first start the app, you have a couple choices here. For one, I can select from this small list of categories. Uh, so if I didn't describe it earlier, this is a recipe uh, application. So it's a place, the REST API retrieves recipes from the internet for food. So for example, if I was to choose breakfast here, it then uh, retrieves, it queries the REST API using the keyword breakfast, and I get a whole bunch of results for recipes. They have a title, they have a publisher, and they have a rating, and then obviously an image. So I can scroll down. If I scroll down to the 30th entry, uh, I then load more with some pagination right there. So it's then querying the database again, asking for more recipes. So there's kind of an important thing there that was sort of subtle. So I want to just take a second and explain it. What I just implemented there is something called pagination. So what's happening is when I first query the database, it's only retrieving 30 recipes. But then as soon as I scroll to the very bottom of the list, you saw that little loading animation. I'll show you again, I'll just scroll to the bottom. So if I scroll to the bottom, there's that loading animation, and then it retrieves another 30. So it gets 30, I scroll to the bottom, it appends another 30, I scroll to the bottom again, and it then appends another 30. So I'm looking at 90 total recipes right now. Pagination is very important to optimize performance in your apps because you don't wanna query you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of objects and try and display that in a list. You only want to retrieve the ones that are absolutely necessary or the ones that the user is gonna see. If they wanna see more, then they can scroll to the bottom and it will query more. Okay, so now if I click on one of these recipes, it then takes me to a more detailed view. I still have the picture, I have the title, I have the rating, but now instead of, uh, well, I guess this is more information, now I have ingredients, the ingredients that are required to make this recipe. And all of the recipes have this. So if I click on a different one, that will then give me the ingredients for this other recipe. So that's one way to search. If I go back to the main screen, which is the category screen, I also have a search view up here. So it's giving me a suggestion. I can search for chicken or I could search for something like bacon, uh, onion, bacon and onion. So now this is going to search the database for recipes that contain bacon and onion. So if I just click one of these here, you can see that it has onion in the recipe and it also has bacon in the recipe. So all of these, whoops, all of these uh, recipes here should have those ingredients. Now let's talk about the database cache. So the way this works, the way I've designed it to work is if the user looks at a recipe. So if I look at a recipe like I'm doing right now, that recipe is inserted into the local database cache. So if I was to go back and I was to turn off the network, so I'm turning off the service and then I was to click that same recipe that I just looked at, it has no problem viewing that recipe, but watch what happens when I click on one that I haven't viewed. If I click on this one, What's going to happen is it's going to time out after three seconds and it's going to tell the user that, sorry, I wasn't able to retrieve that recipe. Now, what happens if I go back and I try to make that query, that same, whoops, that same uh, bacon onion query now that the network is down. So what I expect to see is all the data that I've entered into the cache previously should be there. So if I press search, I still get a whole bunch of entries. So even though the network is down, as you can see from up, up in the top here, 
I'm still getting a bunch of, bunch of list items. The reason I'm seeing so many is from me testing. All of these were added from testing. If I scroll down, I, I should be able to find the ones that I just inserted. So there, there is our bacon, onion, cheddar biscuits, and the, the pizza that we were looking at. Those two are now entered into the database cache. I can click them, and it takes me to that same view uh, as what I was seeing when the network was up. This is going to be a very cool course. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, as I said, I'm going to break it up into two parts because I think it's pretty tricky to... It's going to be a lot for especially people who aren't super familiar with Android and MVVM to learn uh, how to do a REST API query, how to use Retrofit, how to learn MVVM, how to use MVVM, and also how to build a database cache. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably split it up into two separate courses where in the first one I get started with Retrofit and querying the API and using MVVM. And then in the second part, we'll look at building that database cache. And just to give you a fair warning, this is going to be a members only course that's going to be available on my website. If you aren't familiar with my website, it's codingwithmitch.com. It's very easy to become a member. You just go to this login button right here. You can create an account by going to register or click on this become a member button right here. It's going to take you to where you can enroll to become a member on the website. If uh, you just want to become, you just want to register for free and you don't want to actually become a member, that's cool too. Just go to login go to register, create a new account, and then you can watch all the courses that are on the website, all the free courses. I have a bunch of free ones like this SQLite for Beginners, Google Maps and Directions API, my old SQLite for Beginners one, and the other ones are going to be members only, so you got to be a member to watch them. And uh, the new REST API course with MVVM and a database cache is going to be a members only course, but it's going to be definitely really very much worth it. Uh, building, Being able to build a database cache uh, use the architecture patterns, make requests with retrofit. These are all things that you need to know if, if you want to build any app or get a job as a developer. They're really, really fundamental skills, so you definitely won't regret it.